Hi everybody, Malena here again with ELV for our weekly What's Up Wednesday interview. Today we've got Stephanie and we're going to hop on here early today just because we can and we're both ready. So without further ado, Stephanie, go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about any or organizations that you're a part of. Hi, um, I am Stephanie Bivens. I'm the Early Childhood Coordinator for Mesa County Public Health. Perfect. We are going to cover a little bit of information on the child care 3,000 or 8,000 8, plan today. So just give us a little bit of history on that, kind of what pieces um, of your organization that you already had for it, um, relationships with the community that you had, um, and basically pieces that you didn't have answers for at the beginning. Okay. Um, so with the history, the inception of child care 8,000 really began when Mesa County identified that our youngest members of the community really didn't have the same early childhood education opportunities as many of our statewide counterparts. So our rates of child abuse, children at risk, out of home placements were consistently higher than state averages. Reading and math scores um, of fourth graders lagged behind state averages as well. Um, so it became really clear to our community stakeholders that something needed to be done um, to support our families and, and prepare young children for future academic success. So our leadership really understood that early childhood has linear effects on healthy human development in our community. So um, after looking into the problem, the lack of affordable and quality childcare options were identified as barriers. Capacities of our child care facilities um, were serving less than 25% of our over 8,000, hence the name, children from birth to age five. Um, so addressing child care was really kind of the next step to improve outcomes for young children and their families and allow families to be able to accept, accept positions and go back to work. Um, so those kind of factors formed the community initiative and the need to develop a, a two generational approach. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, that was a very thorough background. So you hit on a little bit, but um, what challenges were the providers having that prompted this pilot for you? Okay, so, um, you know, we, we partnered with licensing, our local PCF, um, CDHS, and the Workforce Center, CCAP offices. Um, we needed data from the pilot programs and our providers to really identify what those issues were and inform decisions to be able to take action. So our pilot programs were really varied in structure. Um, and after diving deep in with them for a few months, I began to identify that they all pretty much struggled with the same issues. Um, it really boiled down to availability of workforce, professional development, um, which if you address workforce, then they have the ability to utilize shared services effectively. Right. And then um, helping them gain access to community partnerships, connecting with all resources possible, like the workforce center programs with paid internships and and those types of things. That's great. Yeah, that's awesome. So, um, what is the structure of your pilot currently? Um, so, in addressing that, um, we really know that early childhood education is pivotal to healthy human development and quality care is the foundation for people to join the workforce and stimulate local economy. So. The structure, we're really trying to double capacity and um, support working families. So the community approach developed is to um, develop a, a robust workforce, improve business practices, improve the quality of early childhood educational experiences. Perfect. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, if you can highlight just a few successes of the pilot so far. Sure. Um, so with this, we've seen an increase of 20% overall licensed capacity in the county. Wonderful. We know that our child cares vary greatly, but with the focus on quality providers trained in early childhood development and education, they're really well equipped to support brain development, school readiness, and healthy families. Um, our training and professional development cohorts have expanded uh, with varying models to, con to continue career mm -hmm. development. We established a substitute attempt to hire pool, um, and most recently we expanded the CDA model with, to um, cover 13 counties uh, with CDHS and Red Rocks, and we're providing director scholarships in partnership with the Workforce Center. Teachers have commented that through these multiple trainings provided and scholarship opportunities that they've increased their knowledge, they feel better, um, feel developed as, as teachers with higher quality interactions and engagements. We have the director's network and the um, office hours, and those are places for um, 
directors and teachers to really kind of collaborate, share resources, network, and support one another. With our pilots, um, through the coaching, mentoring, and consulting, they've shown improved business practices, increasing revenue, um, greater retention with staff, uh, accessing grants and high quality programs like CVP and Early Head Start. Mm -hmm. They've gained in quality ratings. They um, have expanded capacity, able to um, increase staff wages as well, and utilize those scholarships and the partnership opportunities. Um, we also became a sponsor for CACFP uh, that is expanded beyond the pilot sites. And that has been proven to generate revenue, increase quality, mealtime efficiencies for, for staff, and then better nutrition for children. Um, we've done trainings with the pilot sites that deepen their understandings of early childhood ethics, behaviors, um, classroom management, kind of the nitty gritty stuff there. Mm -hmm. um, and then we, we've developed kind of some child care specific efficiency tools and resources through this. And we're working on developing a website to be able to expand that availability to a greater community. Um, some, some things that I think of that the directors have mentioned, you know, like one director with our pilot site had said that they used to run on a skeleton crew and now they have high quality teachers and they're fully staffed. Um, some have, they were going down the road of closing doors. They felt under supported. They didn't have the resources to be able to, to thrive. And now with this, it's transformed their center and they're increasing the number of families they service. Um, expanding quality revenue and they're they're expanding currently so kind of exciting for that's them that around yeah that's great um looking back i guess compared to kind of where you all started um what pieces were the most critical for your success for now basically um i really think our partner engagements have strengthened resources and services to providers and and to our families um using that community voice is huge um and and their input to inform our efforts providing direct support and guidance um, to these resources and tools, coaching process, working towards positive outcomes. Um, providers really do have so much on their plates. Mm -hmm. and sometimes it is just as simple as researching um, items for them or you know, eliminating barriers, coaching them through tough issues and just really being a sounding board. Yeah, that's great. Do you have any advice overall for prospective staff provider networks? Um, Building those relationships with community partners, really right. hearing those issues, utilizing data to inform system change, um, looking for innovative, creative solutions mm -hmm. outside of the box. Um, <laughs> Literally anything, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, and I think, you know, the coaching, the mentoring, that kind of stuff was really tailored to each program to their goals. Um, just giving them the tools was not enough. Guiding right. them through those steps really ensured their success and made them feel supported. So it was kind of, we're going to do this together. We've got it, right? <laughs> right. Yep. We understand that. So I'll give you the last few minutes here. Um, just kind of elaborate or explain how ELV helped the pilot. Yeah. Okay. Um, so our pilot programs um, that we were working with already had access to ELV, ELV's core and resource platform. But they didn't really utilize them very much. Right. So um, ELV provided trainings for Mesa County Public Health staff, as well as our pilot programs to increase their knowledge and functionalities of the systems. Right. And the staff members were really accessible and very helpful when questions or issues arose. Usually in those those moments, um, I was picking up the phone and texting, hey, we have a problem. And they would right. just <laughs> address it really quickly. So we got to know them. Um, and so it was it was great. But they would always be be ready to help. Um, even like utilizing the billing system, providers immediately increased efficiencies and decreased their costs. Right. The resource platform we use quite often for templates and resources to address something pretty quickly. Everything from handbooks and policies to the hiring resources and the job descriptions. And um, the CACFP forms made the meal program reimbursements pretty efficient and effective. Right. Um, and then those reports really helped our providers develop a habit of reviewing their attendance, paying attention to CCAP reimbursements, the enrollment, um, increasing capacity and business efficiencies, which ultimately increased their productivity and, and revenue gain. Right. Yeah, that's great. You shared. Yeah, that's so helpful. Yeah. Answers a bunch of questions there. 
Um, yes, that's kind of all I've got for you today. I appreciate your time. Thank you so much. We just kind of wanted to share basically what a group looks like once the network uses ELV and that was incredibly beneficial and lots of information there. So I won't keep you any much longer, Stephanie. Thank you so much. I appreciate it and hope you stay safe and healthy. Have a good one. Great. Thank you. You too. See ya. Bye.